Salva fucking Shoth. Dragon Age 3 The Apology, the latest in a year-long procession of mind-blowing first true next-gen experiences advertised as only being possible with the unbridled planet-crushing power of the PS4, which were then promptly released on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Fucking oops! My history with the Dragon Age franchise is a storied one and involves more actual conflict and character development than the last three Bioware titles at least. Short version? Enchantment? I was impregnated by Dragon Age Origins, with untold permutations on each customizable character's origin story, and further often shockingly dramatic narrative forks thereafter. One could easily excuse these somewhat samey environments, unimaginative world design, and stilted romances that could usually be initiated, consummated, and end in bitter divorce in all of five fucking lines of dialogue. Ooh, saucy. While imperfect, Origins seem to be the basis for what should have been the series to depose Elder Scrolls, or at the very least serve as a medieval fantasy the accompaniment to Mass Effect, which back in 2009, I'd like to remind you all, remained mercifully unmolested. Allegedly! Allegedly! That's ignorant! For those who can't be asked to familiarize themselves with my Dragon Age 2 review, first off, you lazy cunt, and second, allow me to summarize. <clears throat> I'm not saying Dragon Age 2 left me cold, but I did need fucking snow chains to get back to the main menu. The foundation, rather than being built on by one of the pioneering RPG studios of the late 90s, lay fallow and withered, even as mainstream gaming websites, frantically praying their EA advertising revenue checks cleared, shamelessly attempted to blow smoke up our collective asses and convince us all that not Bioware, but the fans were to blame. Project lead Mike Laidlaw, in one of the most galling acts of hubris I've ever witnessed from a game developer, offered a half-hearted conciliatory apology, bracketed by thinly veiled acrimony directed at his audience for simply not getting it. Ass hat if the sales numbers are anything to go by, the only thing the fans were not getting was a copy of your contemptible fucking game. With Bioware's roller coaster credibility, not to mention the well publicized financial turpitudes of their parent company, Electronic Arts. We're all gonna be rich! Ah! We broke even! Ah! It's good satire. The simple fact is the Dragon Age Inquisition downright needs to be good, and it's my pleasure to report that it absolutely fucking is. Dragon Age Inquisition takes a sledgehammer to the caustic legacy of its predecessor while paying unrepentant homage to the glory days of Dragon Age Origins and standing utterly unafraid to bask in its own unique glitch-infested open-world charm. I was initially skeptical of Bioware's ability to marry their traditional story-driven choose-your-own-adventure novel sensibilities with the fast and loose sandbox flair of Elder Scrolls, a concern that given the rampant technical issues, evidence of which is festooned across all of YouTube, I have to say was frankly vindicated. Ow! But after sinking countless hours into Bioware's personified rebirth, I can say without reservation that the Dragon Age team have risen to the occasion regardless. Tactically driven, isometric combat in the vein of Baldur's Gate, the original three playable races from the only decent Dragon Age title, along with a newly playable fourth, a wide array of recruitable companions, a handful of which border on being <gasps> genuinely fucking interesting, and wonder of wonders, a rich crafting system not at all dissimilar from fellow Rageaholic recommendation bound by flame that somehow doesn't render me fucking comatose. Are all the changes welcome? Well, let's put it this way. All the shit from Dragon Age Origins is still every bit as deep as it is glitchy. All the shit from Dragon Age 2 still swallows record-breaking quantities of cock. And we were able to take them in some pretty wildly different directions from virginal girl next door to crazy up against the wall. Let's have it on right here. Hmm. Apostate prostitutes? Apostitutes! <laughs> What? You just live in a, a total dick world. And the new additions are roughly a 50-50 split between the rich world-building detail of Bioware's former repute or shit that was simply better executed in fucking Skyrim. In fact, quite literally, the only holdover from Dragon Age 2 that doesn't make me want to deep-fry a puppy is the Luciferian makeover for the Kunari. Granted, the big, buff, rippling, titty ox guy race was stolen hand over hoof from the Breath of Fire series, but when the alternative is fantasy black guys, didn't we already hike this trail in Elder Scrolls? In a contemporary games industry so steeped in politically correct pusillanimity, not even Sub-Zero's fatality is a fucking backbone, it's entirely possible to 
following remarks will be forever stricken from the record, but fuck it. Fuck them. This ain't the fucking Jimquisition. I've long since resigned myself to the fact that I will not be receiving a Christmas card from Rachel Maddow this year, so let's call a spade a spook, shall we? Racism sure does suck a dick, but treating black people like an item of sideshow curio to rival the elephant man's cock is like... <laughs> Crickets tap dancing on a pan fried watermelon. Skittles and spray. And that's how black helicopters are using chemtrails to build an Al Qaeda robot. I. I. I don't know what to think anymore. Well, we had to make some cuts for content, but I'm sure the core message remained intact. And hey, at least now we all know what it's like to write for Bioware. And while we're on the subject, where Bioware's competence when tackling an open world game was concerned, my skepticism mainly centered around the suspicion that in their haste to offer an entertaining and engaging playable fantasy sandbox, their bread and butter character-driven storytelling would by necessity fall by the wayside. And if I'm being perfectly honest, in some ways, it absolutely has. Perhaps no more egregiously than through the un welcome re-emergence of the dreaded dialogue wheel. No! Just fucking no! No! Three sentences of dialogue cannot be accurately summarized in three words, Bioware. We hated it in Mass Effect. We burn you in effigy when it emerges the single biggest downgrade in Dragon Age 2 electric boogaloo. Between the Civil War, the inherent ethical quagmire presented by Blood Magic, and the ascent of the Devinter Imperium, Dragon Age Inquisition features perhaps Bioware's most morally ambiguous narrative to date. So what Flat Zero Encephalogram decided, hey, what better way to convey this omnipresent ambiguity than by decking the halls with bright red icons that all but loudly blink the words, Press X to be a cock! I, I was home in bed. You're full of shit, Jacob. The truth is, you hated that bitch. You followed her and dragged her into the car and then took her out to the moors. She woke up and you smashed her face in with a socket wrench. No. No, 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 no. And then you stopped no. her. You stomped her because she's a drunken whore and she treated you like shit. You stomped her for all the years you had to take it. You stomped her because you are such a weak fucking sister, Jacob. <laughs> If you're that fucking determined to lobotomize your conversation system, don't stop halfway. Go for the brass ring. Just hand me a one-word description conveying the general tone of the reply. Surly, charming, ebullient, dyspeptic. I can listen to fuck how you word it, but either the five-word summaries that a palm reader would find gallingly vague have got to go, or it's time to stuff the deluxe edition with a conversational decoder ring. But mainstream press wantonly describing this game as flawless? You put the fucking crack pipe down, escapist.com. Nitpicking is one thing, but you don't have to dive to Greg Luganus' depth to smack your head on a floor, 500. From side quests so thoroughly glitched as to render them outright incompletable to the, shall we say, leisurely pace at which the narrative unfurls. While the game they're afflicting is superb, it's intellectually dishonest not to acknowledge these as the abject, readily obvious, occasionally inexcusable oversights they truly are, virtually all of which directly impact enjoyment of the game. And by readily obvious, I mean readily obvious to anyone who makes the decision to jump on a fucking horse. Marvel at these equine animations, Rageaholics. I haven't seen a carbon-based life form that stiff since the time Amazing Atheist was left alone in the produce section at Costco. Floating allies, disappearing enemies, disappearing villagers, disappearing land masses. These issues, unlike Charlie Sheen's last five girlfriends, are not minor. And if you happen to be from the future and all these problems have long since been ameliorated via patch, first off, how does it feel to still not have flying cars, ass face? And second, good for Bioware, or more likely the fans for restoring baseline functionality. But riddle me this, does a post-launch patch materializing weeks, months, or god forbid years distant change in any material fashion the fact that Dragon Age Inquisition was tripping over Game of the Year awards before it was minimally fucking presentable? After witnessing Jeff Keighley and company Bukaki all over Bioware's T-Zone at the Game Awards, I jokingly opined on Twitter that giving Dragon Age Inquisition a Game of the Year award less than three weeks after launch was like Hannah Troy Aikman a high 
Wiseman on his way out of the birth canal, but that's actually a flawed analogy. Given its glitch-addled, only borderline functional state, it's more like handing an ICU crack baby the Guinness record for longest life before the fucking egg had been fertilized. But the most visible flaw by far is a story that progresses at the speed of glaucoma, which isn't to say it's the fault of the writing necessarily. Break it down beat by beat and it becomes readily apparent that the single player campaign checks all the narrative boxes long before the clock strikes boredom. The problem is that the qualifier for progressing to the next plot point is that the player is outright forced to acquire influence points by remaining habitually engaged in desultory side quests that are every bit as repetitive as they are utterly impertinent to the fucking plot. Oh yeah, looming threat of civil war, big satanic vortex in the sky threatening to suck us all into the same dimension where people actually find Jimmy Fallon funny. Hashtag don't mind if I don't. <laughs> Pretty good. Hashtag getting my cookie on. Hashtag I'm the real cookie monster. That's not funny! Sure, impending apocalypse, but before you deal with any of that shit, farmer fucknuts over there lost a goat. Urgency. But I only itemize these flaws because, in my opinion, a true masterpiece can only be as great as its greatest flaw. And as a cursory five-minute search on YouTube will readily confirm, Dragon Age 3 The Apology is in no discernible danger of having a shortage in that department. The cynical, somewhat commercialized approach of the post-EA era is certainly present and accounted for, hence I shrink from uttering the phrase, Bioware is back, but rest secure in the knowledge that Dragon Age decidedly fucking is. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed!